Just scrolling through the internet. Not reading scans of money. Go for Zach from Uchi Shelf. Oh, hello there, president of the manga industry. Wasn't expecting your call today. Ah, yes, no, I'm doing quite well, thank you. To what do I owe the pleasure? Uh, you know what, it's funny you should say that. I'm actually about to record a video right now. Uh, well, it was just, it was gonna be a review. Um, uh, uh, uh well, no, I... I don't think that'll work. Uh, I think a couple of videos ago I said I wasn't going to be buying much more manga this year, so I don't want to go back my word and then make myself look... St uh, no, 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 you don't have to release... No, you... No, <laughs> no, I totally understand. You don't have to release those photos of me. It's all good. I'm going to hang up. I'm going to do the video now. It's going to be fine, okay? Okay, have yourself a wonderful day. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What's going on, folks? Zach from Uchi Shelf here. Hope you guys are doing good and reading lots of manga. Today, I want to sit down and talk to you guys about a bunch of manga that are coming out in 2021 that I'm absolutely looking forward to. Not that I'm being pressured into telling you guys about. Not that nobody's got weird photos of me at all. Definitely not. I, these are manga that I am looking forward to and that you should be looking forward to. And I just want to share them with you. Why do you guys have to be so weird about it? Let's get into it. Now, the first manga I'm really looking forward to this year is called Days on Fest by Kanato Oka. This is a manga that follows two classmates as they go to their very first rock festival. They soon discover that the experience they had at this festival was better than they could have ever imagined. Now, when I'm not being the Zack from Uchu Shelf that you guys have come to know and love, I'm usually Zack from sitting on my ass at home working or Zack from going out to concerts. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to like outside or anything, but there's some pretty crazy stuff going on out there. And unfortunately, due to all that crazy stuff out there, there are no concerts. Because of that, I've been going through what I guess you could call withdrawal. Specifically, withdrawal of not being able to drink more than I should and being battered around like a pinball by a horde of sweaty strangers. Now, I've watched some like live streams of bands on YouTube and they're pretty fun, but it doesn't hold a candle to going to actually see live music. And I can't imagine that reading a book about people going to see live music will exactly be the same. But there's sort of a hole in my heart from where I've not been able to go see live music. So I'm kind of hoping this manga fills in that hole and placing all of my eggs in that one basket. And if it doesn't, well, only time will tell. Next up is A School Frozen in Time by Naoki Arakawa and Mizuki Sujimura, and that's being released here in the West by Vertical. This manga is being described as a psychological horror story that is filled with twists and turns and hard truths about being a high schooler living in modern society. Specifically, the kind of pressures that high schoolers face as they mature and grow up towards adulthood. Now, from a synopsis, this seems like it's going to be right up my alley. There's time-stopping hijinks, it's a psychological horror, which is one of my favorite genres of media, and it's got this mystery aspect to it because all the characters have to figure out how everything is connected to the suicide of one of their former classmates. And that's pretty much all I know about this one. I didn't want to spoil it too much. I read the synopsis. It sounded really cool to me. I'm definitely going to pick it up. It's sitting in my wish list right now. So if and when it comes out, I'm going to check it out. So next up on this list, we have Shaman King, a manga that I have never read. A manga I've always wanted to read, a show that I very briefly watched when it was on TV, but I don't know a whole lot about it. I know it follows a bunch of, um, like, guys who who are like ex i don't know if they're exorcists or they're mediums or they're, they're i think they're shamans maybe and i guess maybe they're um the main character probably wants to become the king of the shamans is what i would imagine um i imagine there's some fighting um a lot of friendship as it is a shonen um and that's more or less all i can really say about that it's it's one of those manga that when i was getting more seriously into collecting manga back when I had my first collection, it was really hard to find. At the time, Viz Media, I believe, had the license to it. And then I don't think they published all of it and it expired. And then I think it was in limbo for a while because this is around the time when Kodansha decided that they were going to open up a USA shop and they started releasing manga on their own here. And then they just kind of sat on the license and did absolutely nothing with it for quite a while. And then it was announced that there was going to be a new anime and then they said they were going to put everything up on Comixology. There's going to be these three one omnibuses that are coming out, which is what I'm holding out for. But I'm really excited about this one in particular because I've been on kind of the other side of that fence of where I will talk up a manga that's either ongoing or it's like long running and it's already finished and it's really interesting to see people go into that and get their opinions and thoughts on it and just kind of experiencing going through it your first time again because that's something you never really get back after you read a manga but it's interesting to be on the other side of that now because I've never read Shaman King I only know a little bit about it having watched like the four kids dub like way back in the day but from what I can tell it'll be right up my alley I'm, I'm probably going to enjoy it I, I would at least hope I'm not gonna buy all these omnibuses and 
you know, never read them. Now, while we're on the topic of omnibuses and out of print, I'm also looking forward to Omnibus 6 of Gantz to come out this year. Now, I've read all of Gantz. I've never owned Gantz, but I've read all of it. And you can make that interpretation to whatever you want it to be. I'm trying my honest to God best to own all of Gantz, but, you know, I understand that there's like stuff going on in the world, but, you know, it just kind of sucks when I'm like, you're trying to collect stuff and then stuff gets pushed back. And it's no fault to anyone. It's just like a first world problem that this is my only forum that I can complain about. And I know I'm going to sound like uh, an entitled whiny little kid right now, but you know, the, the mitigation to me waiting a year for this omnibus would have been, I don't know, making your manga digital dark horse. I don't know why you haven't done that yet. It would solve a lot of problems, but that's, you know, I'm not a businessman, so. Now, if I am counting my volumes right, this Omnibus will be the second to last of Phase 1. It'll cover pretty much the rest of the Kill Tag Ojima arc, go into the, uh, what is it called? The Oni Alien, and which is the last alien of that phase, and then it will probably halfway through Omnibus 7 get into what I consider the meat and potatoes of Gantz. I know phase one and the missions and everything are great, but like the catastrophe and everything from that up to the end. Mwah. Speaking of, I have a review of phase two and three of Gantz coming out. Eventually it's all written. I just gotta, you know, sit down and record it. But if you are waiting for that, rest assured, it is coming in the next month. So next up, we got Die Dark by Kyu Hayashida that's being released here in the West by Seven Seas Entertainment. Now, contrast to Doro Hedero, Die Dark is a sci-fi series that follows Saha Sanko, whose body has incredible powers that are so powerful, it lures in people from all over the galaxy with the intention of ripping him limb from limb. Now, with the help of his skeleton buddy, Evakian, the two of them travel throughout space, avoiding people murdering him, fighting off people with their powers, and hopefully finding the reason for Zaha's curse. Now, in college, I took a science fiction literature course, and my professor at the time said, science fiction's great, there's a lot of crap, but if you can wade through the crap, you'll find some absolute gems. With that in mind, I really hope Die Dark is to science fiction what Doro Hedero was to fantasy. Now, if you started describing like spells and wizards and things like that to the average person, they'll start thinking of Harry Potter, they'll think of Lord of the Rings. Me, like the superior gentleman I am, I immediately think of Doro Hedero. And not to put too much pressure on this manga, but I'm kind of hoping that the same thing happens with Die Dark. Now, next is one of two of my most anticipated manga of 2021, and that's Under Ninja by Kengo Hanazawa, released in the West by Dempa. Now, Kengo Hanazawa created one of my top five manga, I Am A Hero. And I'm not a huge fan of horror, and I'm not a huge fan of zombies, but he, the way he told that story presented the world, and how everything was really tied to the realism of the characters and everything, just honestly really sold me on it all. Now, Under Ninja is a modern day ninja story that follows a young ninja who's also a neat by the name of Kuro Kumogakure. Now, after a long period of not being able to find any work as a ninja, Kuro is finally given a job from the higher ups. Now, despite the fact that Kengo Hanazawa quickly became one of my favorite mangaka, and that's why I'm looking forward to Under Ninja the most, I'm also really looking forward to seeing his take on a modern day ninja story. It was really interesting to see his take on the zombie genre, so I kind of want to see how well that translates to telling a more modern day story, especially set around something that isn't quite modern like ninjas. Finally, to absolutely nobody's surprise, my most anticipated manga release of 2021 is Taiyo Matsumoto's number 5, released here in the West by Viz Media. Now, as much as I memed about Ping Pong getting a release here in the West, and hey, it finally did, so memeing pays off after all. Number 5 has actually always been something of a white whale to me in terms of manga. Way back in high school when I had my first manga collection, I had the first two volumes of number 5 that Viz put out. Now, those two volumes of number 5 went out of print pretty much the second they hit the shelves. Now, those two volumes of number 5 way back in the day were the only volumes of number 5 that were ever released, and they were the single volumes, so there were eight volumes in this series in total, and I think Viz only sold maybe a thousand copies a piece for each volume, and then never released anymore, never printed the first two volumes ever again, and it just kind of faded into obscurity. Now, somewhat jokingly, after Ping Pong got released, I was like, oh, what the hell am I gonna do with my life now? So every time Viz Media would jump on social media and be like, hey guys, we got some new manga releases coming out for you, stick around. I would be right in there begging for number five. And I never took it as seriously as I did with Ping Pong because I know how kind of obscure and niche that number five was. Suffice to say, I can't even put into words how unbelievably over the moon I was when I just opened up Twitter one day and I had about 15 notifications tagging me in Viz announcing that they were actually going to release it in two Omnibus editions. Now, number five is a geopolitical fantasy thriller that is set in a world that has become kind of a desert melting pot, run by a group of super-powered security guardians by the name of the Rainbow Council. Unfortunately for the Rainbow Council, one of their own, number five, who is one of the top marksmen in the world, has gone missing with a mysterious companion by the name of Matryoshka. Number five's disappearance poses an incredible security risk. And unfortunately for the Rainbow Council and the rest of the world, 
number five is not going down without a fight. I think at this point in my YouTube career, I really don't have to extol the virtues of Taiyo Matsumoto. He's my favorite mangaka. And if you want to know why and where to start with this manga, I'll leave a link to a video in the description below. Anyways, folks, that is it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Are there any other manga that you guys are looking forward to that I didn't list here today? Let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at YouTube Shelf. And as always, don't forget to support Legal Manga. Go to www.wherecaniweadmanga.com to get the lowdown on where you, the viewer at home, can read manga for free through a subscription or per volume. You're doing all in a way to support the manga industry, support the creators, support everyone who works in it, and gets us more manga like this stuff right here. And until next time, folks, happy reading.